morning. I wanted to talk this morning about seeking the Lord. And I know that's why you all are here. So this is nothing new, no new thing I'm going to say, I'm sure. You've all heard it. But since we're in this earthen vessel, we need to be reminded of these things. It, it confirms it for us. It reminds us and keeps us steadfast looking towards him at all times. So I want to start out talking about the Lord is kind and compassionate, not willing that any should perish. He affords us opportunity and gives times for us to seek him. And the scripture talks about this, that he's not far from any of us. This is found in Acts 17. And uh, I remember when I first heard this and realized what this scripture meant, that uh, he had provided this especially for each one of us. I, I was just really, I remember, impressed about this. God, who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on, the face, on all the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings. That's the part I was talking about. So that they should seek the Lord, in the hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. So he has purposefully set us in certain places at certain times uh, around certain uh, boundaries there he talks about. In fact, he tells us to make him our first priority above other fleshly needs in this life. He already knows what we have need of, it tells us, and yet tells us in uh, Matthew, he talks about, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Seeking him is not a one-time event, Amen. but rather a, li a lifelong pursuit. Amen. Another, uh, one of my um, favorite verses is in Jeremiah 29, 13 and 14, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you, says the Lord. The Lord doesn't want anyone going through the motions like a ritual or a tradition in which to find him or, to, or it to be just a side issue with them. But it's to be the most important thing in their lives. Then and only then will you really find him. Not everyone knows this, but yet it's revealed here in his word. Jesus made it very clear when he said to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. He wants all of us, not just uh, like we talked about last week, a compartmental uh, part of us. Uh, he wants all of us our total being. Another aspect of this is that you must not put off seeking him or ignoring him until you like have the time or when, whenever because there is a window of time for all of us. And God knows this, but we don't, aren't always aware of how much time that we may have. Amen. The prophet Isaiah says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. And then listen to the words of David to his son Solomon from First Chronicles he says, As for you, my son Solomon, know the God of your father and serve him with a loyal heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and understands all the intent of the thoughts. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. Amen. Some heavy words to think about there, isn't it? We have an example of some who traveled a long way in search of Jesus. There were some wise men who studied the stars. And it was revealed somehow to them about this king that was to be born. And they followed this star. They believed that he was worthy of that long journey that they made to seek him and wanted to worship him. That was their purpose in going. And also brought rich gifts to give to him, not just something small, but, you know, very rich gifts to give to him. Psalms 14.2 says, The Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand who seek God. Now, Satan works overtime to keep people from seeing who the Lord really is. Uh -huh. When you don't know the truth about God's Son, you don't know that he has paid the debt of the sin of the world and offers us eternal life to live forever, then there's no reason to seek him. And many go about in the world uh, just like this. But when the word does go out and the truth is spoken, it does not return to him void. Those who don't receive him will be lost, but those who embrace his truth will seek him with their whole heart. So I want to leave you with this last verse here about seeking, Matthew 7, 7 to 8. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. This is a promise. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Amen. Amen. So we'll have our opening prayer here before uh, Brother Bob comes to lead us in our morning study.